What's up, it's Lalo. I want to share a couple quick tips when using spotlights inside DAS Studio when you're planning on rendering with iRay. So as you can see, I have this real basic scene I set up just to demonstrate a couple concepts. It's nothing more than a couple primitives, a spotlight, and a camera. Uh, I have the light source coming from this upper left-hand corner. And so let's just see what this looks like with the spotlight at their default settings. So these are the actual settings that it's on. They're all default except for the luminous flux. I turned that up to 450,000 just because the default setting, I think it's like a thousand, really isn't enough to really produce that much light. Uh, so yeah, I usually start when I'm setting up lighting in my scenes, I usually start with around 250,000 and then go up from there. And I usually jump into like about 50,000 increments uh, up or down, depending on you know if I want more or less light. Um, but for this, I just went with 450,000. So anyway, let's uh, let's see what this looks like when it's rendered. Um, so as you can see, the spotlight casts these really hard shadows at its default settings, which um, really doesn't look that good in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it might be what you're going for, you know, if maybe if you know you have a character in front of headlights or an actor on stage under a single spotlight or something like that, but. Typically, in most scenes, you would want softer shadows than that. Uh, so let's just show, let me show you a really easy way to make that happen when you're using spotlights. So anyway, let's just go back to our light settings here. I just have the spotlight selected. Um, you can either go to the parameters tab or the lights tab, whatever is more convenient for you, but I'm just going to light tabs, <clears throat> the light tab rather. And now, yeah, I have the light selected. So all you have to do is change the light geometry from point to a, uh, you know, a, basically a primitive shape. Um, I basically, I prefer using discs most of the time just because I feel like, you know, most lights are round. So I think, you know, disc is a good place to start. Um, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, I do believe sphere and cylinder are more taxing when it comes to rendering. Um, but yeah, I mean, just use whatever you feel like you need to use to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish in your scene. So I'm going to switch that to disk. And now, now it'll take into account these uh, height and width settings. And these are in the, the scale of centimeters. So you figure, you know, 10 by 10 is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. But let's crank that up to 20 and render it again and see what happens. All right. So as you can see, the sh shadows are a little bit softer. But it didn't make a whole lot of difference. They're they're still pretty hard. So let's go ahead and crank that up a little bit more. Let's try 50 and see what it looks like. And keep in mind these settings will, you know, the shadows will be produced a little bit differently with different settings depending on how, or with the same settings rather, depending on how far away, you know, the spotlight is from whatever you know, object is casting the shadows. Um, so yeah, just wanted to point that out there. Like 50 might work good for one scene, but maybe not perfect for another. Uh, so anyway, this is what it looks like at 50. They're definitely getting better. Um, they're still, I don't know, they're still slightly hard, but it's probably also just the fact that there's no other light sources in this scene. Um, so normally, you know, if there's light coming from other directions, they, the shadows would still you know, the shadows would look a little bit softer. All right, well, let's just try one more, just to give you guys an idea. Let's go with 100 by 100 and render that. All right, so there we go. That's looking, I feel like that's looking better. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to kind of point that out. You can pick whatever settings you like for your scene. So that's that's pretty much sums up the first tip there. But I'd recommend probably always doing at least somewhere between 20 by 20 and 50 by 50. So the other thing I want to point out, um, when you're rendering with your own lighting, you know, like spotlights, system lights, point lights, you kind of have to set up your render settings as well. Otherwise, by default, uh, DAS, usually I believe it goes with dome and scene. And then it actually has like an HDR map plugged in in the environment map section, environment map section, which will also produce light. If not, you know, right now you can see that it has a sun node, and you know what day the uh, it's coming from, and all that stuff. Um, 
so even with just stone and scene, even without an environment map, it's still going to produce its own lighting based off of these uh, these settings down here, the SS settings, basically. Um, so yeah, if you're just trying to render with only your lights that you've put in the scene, then you have to change it from environment mode dome and scene to environment mode scene only. Uh, and then the other thing I want to point out is that you probably already know this, but I should figure I should just cover it real quick anyway. Um, basically, when you create a camera, they come default with a headlamp um, in auto mode which basically just means when you create a camera if there's no other lights in the scene it'll have a light on the camera um, and by default it's on auto and so in that scenario it would be on so you can either turn it off here at the camera like if you're just trying to render with strictly an HDR map or you can also turn it off within your render settings tab under the general section right here auto headlamp and then I, I usually like mine on never because um, I like more control over my lighting than just, you know, some random headlight lamp that's coming off my camera. I feel like it usually doesn't look good. Sometimes it might help, but, you know, I just want to point that out. And so the other thing I wanted to talk about here, actually there's a couple more things, but the next thing uh, is when, when you're uh, wanting to create a spotlight, you can actually use your perspective view or really any other camera you want, but um, we can aim this at this box here. By default, this button's actually not up here. I added that to my menu, but the hotkey is Control Shift A, and that'll just aim your camera at the target, whatever you have selected, and then you can, you know, orbit around that object, whatever. So let's say I want a light to come from right here then all I have to do is create a new light, a new spotlight, um, and so you can either click the you know, the button on the menu or you can go to create new spotlight and then you just want to apply active viewport transformations and that will actually create you a spotlight from that point. Let's see if I can find it there. So there it is. Uh, so that's pretty handy in my opinion. Um, to me it's a lot easier than you know trying to just move the spotlight manually and then the other thing I wanted to show you too let me just go and turn that off it's pretty bright there uh, you can actually aim your spotlight like you would a camera as well so if in your views here you just select whatever spotlight you want to you know aim so let's click spotlight one and now we're actually looking through the spotlight and you can orbit pan dolly it just like you would any other camera I see as you can see the uh, the light moving around there as I orbit around the camera and then you can use the same thing, the aim at point. So I can aim it at that. And now if I go to orbit it, it'll actually, you know, orbit around that object instead of just uh, instead of just orbiting the camera from its point. Okay, so that that comes in super handy. Um, it definitely uh, definitely makes life easier to me when you're setting up lighting. Um, the other thing I want to point out is we could, we could create the same similar um, soft shadow effect by if we created a plane and then moved it you know, to that same position as a spotlight, then we could just scale the plane up and down and it would also produce you know, harder, softer shadows. But in my opinion, that's a lot harder to do um, you know, than just moving the camera around and then creating a camera looking through that with the same transforms as a perspective and then also you know if you create a plane like that you don't have the nice feature of being able to look through the light like you can spotlights um, so I, pre I prefer this method most pretty much in most situations uh, oh yeah the other thing I want to point out with uh, the light settings is you can actually have it right here if you, you might have noticed that render emitter and what that does if it's on is if your light is close enough to your cam, like if it's within your camera view, you'll see like the giant disc that the light is coming off of. Or the disc might, might not be giant, but um, you'll see the disc that the light's coming off of. And so I honestly usually just turn that off so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but you might have a situation where you want it on. Um, but yeah, so that's up to you. And then... Uh, and then, okay, let's talk a little bit about temperature. So you probably under, know that you know uh, lower is usually towards more towards red colors, and higher is more towards blue. 
Um, and, you know, depending on what time of day and different factors, you know, light outside uh, will be more blue or more red. And then obviously, like, candlelight is more red. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you can look up different Kelvin charts and, you know, get an idea of what Kelvin temperature, whatever light source you're trying to mimic is. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but then they also have this color uh, up here. Um, so if you want a color that's not that you can't find on the Kelvin chart, then that's where you want to go. And so you can just pick whatever color here, and it'll turn your light that color. So let's just do. I usually stick with more pale colors, uh, just because you know a lot of times the light is kind of palish. But I mean, you might want more saturated colors. But anyway, so let's just see what this. I'm gonna just turn that up a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. You can see already it's kind of throwing that purple hue on everything, and so there it is. Looks kind of looks kind of interesting, but you get the idea. You can change it whatever color you want. And so anyway, that uh, concludes this video. I just wanted to make it short and sweet, and and stay on the topic of spotlights. I uh, hope you learned something.